Hello and welcome to Starry Lake and welcome to another um, first impressions video. This is going to be the second one on this channel and as you can tell by the title, it is on a manga that I've recently been reading, Flowers of Evil. So, um, <laughs> I have been gone for a bit so I'm finally back. I'm glad to finally make videos. I am less busy now. So anyways, um, let's just get straight into it and I'll start with um, what I have gone through, a recap of the first 10 episodes and what I've read. So, starting off, we are introduced to our characters, um, Kasuga, um, who is a very shy, um, like, a very shy, uh, dude who has, who's good at school, he just, and he likes reading most of all, especially reading a lot, a lot of books that are high level and wouldn't be for his age, but he enjoys them and he's on understanding them. So anyways, that's Kasuga, and then there's also our second main character, Nakamura. She is like more of a delinquent girl, she is foul-mouthed, she does not care about school, and she's just really weird, antisocial, everything. And lastly, we have our other character, Saiki, and she is like the love interest of this series. She is uh, more of a quiet, she's also good at school, and but she's more of this, she's portrayed as being really pretty and just appealing to every single guy in the class. So, after, so this story follows um, um, Kazuka after he steals a pair of Saiki's clothes, who he uh, has a crush on, and um, later after feeling guilty, Nakamura, as it's revealed that Nakamura actually saw him steal his clothes, and and, Saiki, and Kazuka pretty much just starts um, freaking out about this, and he just feels so guilty and afraid that, oh, what if she doesn't like me anymore, what if blah 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 blah. And, He's also afraid, what will Nakamura say, will she reveal his secret, what will happen. But turns out Nakamura won't reveal his secret under one condition, that he be basically becomes her slave and listens to her every single move. Yup, Kasuka becomes a simp. So, and what Nakamura is essentially doing here is blackmailing him, so I guess that's that. Event, so, the, so Kasuka eventually just keeps doing this back and forth thing with Nakamura. Uh, he eventually does get a date with Saiki, his love interest, after she's impressed by him standing up for other people. Um, after getting this date, um, Nakamura once again finds out that he's on this date, and she blackmails him once again, tells him to wear the gym clothes on this date, and to kiss her by the end of it, um, which he can't really do. So, um, so the whole date scene happens, and towards the end, you know, he's supposed to kiss her, but he kind of stands up for himself, says, no, I'm not going to do this, I'm not a pervert. Uh, to which Nakamura gets mad and dumps some water on him. And this is the first time we've actually seen Kasuga stand up for himself in the series, so I'm actually proud for, proud for him for uh, doing that. After this, the whole relationship between um, Saiki and Nakamura dating, I mean Saiki and Kasuga dating, uh, was revealed to the class and, you know, uh, Kasuga kind of becomes this whole uh, sort of popular figure being like, oh look at you, you got all the popular girls after you and everything doesn't really seem like it. After this, um, Nakamura befriends Saiki, and because Saiki has no idea what's happening between Kasuga and Nakamura, and eventually Nakamura reveals to Kasuga that Saiki just wants to get laid. Um, yep, and um, Saiki actually overhears this conversation and misinterprets it as Nakamura wanting to get laid, so she confronts Kasuga later on about hey are you hiding something from me are you like are you just friends with Nakamura or is there something going on between you and this happened and that's where we end off with Kasuga and Saiki confronting each other in Saiki's room so um this series is very unusual it's very weird a lot of questions I know I, I remember reading this and I just had so many moments where I'm, I'm like hmm you know, like just a bunch of questionable moments and <laughs> decisions I'm like alright um, this is weird for I, how old are these kids again I think they should be in middle school like for middle school kids alright then so anyways on to the potential I think this series has a serious potential for character growth especially its main three cast Saiki, Nakamura and Kasuga I feel like these three can have some pretty major uh, improvement especially uh, Kasuga with him finally standing up for himself maybe Nakamura with her finally realizing what she's doing is wrong and she shouldn't be blackmailing people and Saiki maybe um, 
we I actually we haven't really gotten into her character, so I can't really say how her character will improve. But I assume it's going to be something about her coming to terms with sexuality, stuff like that. Considering um, what she's been saying and wanting to do so far, so uh, I just really see some pretty major growth for, uh, for these characters, as well as dramatic tension. I mean, the first ten chapters already nailed dramatic uh, tension pretty uh, amazingly, and they can um, definitely keep this up. And keep me on my edge of the seat whenever um, like characters uh, are discussing and somebody else overhears them and stuff like that. As well as a very good philosophical um, undertone to the series. I feel like um, the whole flowers of evil thing is definitely an analogy. I mean, although this series seems very face value, like everything's happening up front, I definitely I can definitely tell that there's some sort of underlying theme going on about why Kasuka's reading Flowers of Evil and why everything's happening to him the way it is and I just can't wait to see how this whole thing unfolds and what the whole meaning of the title and how that comes into play with everything else that's happening. So yeah definitely I like to see I like the I do see a lot of potential if the series definitely expands on the book and what that means. Um, for things I disliked most of this is actually the same as what I liked. It all depends on how the author uses the tools and what he's set up so far. So, like I said, he can either make Kasuga, Saiki, and Nakamura develop in such amazing, creative ways, or he can, um, or he can f fall flat on his face, and the characters just become the same as no and as annoying as ever. Because so far, Kasuga is a very wimpy guy, and it is getting slightly annoying how um, easily he's able to get manipulated here for him to claim. For a dude claiming to be, oh, I'm smarter than everybody else in this town and stuff, he doesn't seem very smart to be in this situation. So I just feel like if the author doesn't take his time and doesn't develop these characters, um, he it can always it can end up um, pretty bad. As well as um, this series is actually going at a very fast rate. It, it's all it's pretty troubling, not pretty troublesome, considering that um, in the first ten chapters we already got Kasuga dating his love interest and about and now about to hook up with her as well like so many things have happened i expect i didn't even expect him to talk to saiki in the first 10 chapters at all i expected it just to be between him and nakamura in, the, in this in this span of the first impressions but looks like we're already here so um i hope they definitely have something else in store for them in store for the story for um the rest of the uh, length of it otherwise it can very quickly get tiresome if they keep pulling out the same things an example of this ca is um character just randomly um, um very conveniently being in the right place at the right time the first instance of this being nakamura watching kasuga steal the clothes second instance of this being is nakamura overhearing uh, kasugi and saiki going on the, the date and the third instance being Saiki overhearing um, Nakamura talk to Kasuga about her getting late. So I just feel like it just happens way too often. And if the author keeps using this trope over again, it can definitely get very tiresome. And um, lastly, I want to talk about the philosophical thing. Like I mentioned before, this series can have some pretty good underlying themes and I can't wait to see how it unfolds. But at the same time, this, the this story can also not have anything. I, th I can definitely see this series not expanding on what the flowers are evil means or in other words not doing a very good job at it. This is what I really like to call philosophical nonsense is where some where an author really likes to talk about an idea at a very high, and put themselves at a very high pedestal saying that oh look this idea I have is very good and um, it should be held in high regard and really it's not and it's more just pretentious, pretentious than anything. Yeah, and I feel like this series could go down that route. Otherwise, I feel like this series has some very good potential, but at the same time, it also ha can go down a very bad route. It all depends on how the author uses his tools and his assets to make this series uh, continue the series from this point forward. So anyways, that's all I really have to say with Flowers of Evil. I will come back later um, with a full review, and it should be shortly considering this film. Um, this story is also pretty short, but um, I will be doing my other chapter reviews of this weekend before I get that out. So anyways, look forward to that, and I guess that's it for me today.